Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of DIY or Die, and today I'm going to be tearing down this old RV uh, AC to DC converter here. So let's get started. So this I found, it was in an old double axle uh, travel air trailer, and I'm tearing it down uh, just to rebuild the thing, but I don't need this piece of junk in here anymore. As you can see there's the spec plate for it, so you got 115 in, 60 cycle, big old uh, 500 amp or fi 500 volt amp uh, transformer there and it simply outputs 30 or 12 volts DC at 30 amps so I'll uh, get to taking this plate off here Just a couple of 10 mils It's not going to fit. This guy will. And I'll be back once this plate here is off. Looks like the rest of it's riveted, so I might have to get a drill bit out here. I'll be back. Alrighty, we got these mounts off here. All four of them. So this plate should just come on and lift off right there. It's a heavy bugger, but uh, this one here gave me some trouble. They got lock washers and a nut, and then they have, let me grab it here, just a standard little bolt there, but it's rounded bottom, and it sits up like in there like that, so it's just a bad, bad design. If it starts rusting, it's really hard to get those out, but not too big of a deal. So we can't pull this out because all the wiring goes to this little fuse box. And those are old, old breakers right there. You can practically leave them in the halfway position. <laughs> Yeah, old. This is an old panel. This is. But uh, let's get some of these wires out of here. I'm confused by the, well, first of all, it's a huge, huge, huge amount of wire here, cable, and the plug on it, I would have thought was 240, but it's not hot, I would have thought, you know, hot, hot, and ground, but no, hot, neutral, and ground, uh, this is probably 30 amp cable, and you do not need 30 amps input, I'll tell you that, 480 volt amp load, at 120 volts, that's like 4 amps, so I don't understand the necessity for that. I mean, it's not even long enough, it's probably like 25 feet maybe. And if you're doing that for voltage drop reasons, it still doesn't make sense, because a standard cord, even those junk cords you get at the store, they'll hold up no problem to 4 amps, man, like I don't understand. Alrighty, let's pull these breakers now. Just your standard stab lock. So you can just pull them forward, push your head, and they'll come out. There we are. Got some stranded in there, and some solid wire. They folded them over too. It's kind of weird. So this is actually different than your normal, typical breaker. Uh, panel in here. So, we get a long screwdriver here. So, this is connected to nothing. It's simply a bar that has a little detent here that these 
shove into and then hold them in place. It just helps hold them in place. Uh, get the cables out of the way here. Uh, this would be your bus bar, it'd be your hot bus bar for your 120 volts, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's on an insulated plastic plate, as you can see. So I'm ass assuming that this would, because your neutral bus is right here, there's your neutral bus, there's your feeder cable here, and here's your feeder cable. So I take it they would have a main breaker coming from this live here go through, like I said, a main breaker, energize this plate, and then it would feed the rest of those smaller 15 amp ones. That's, that's what I'm assuming is going on here. That's like, looks like number four. No, not number four, sorry, number eight. Number eight, probably. Number eight, or maybe even number six, stranded. That's, uh, that can handle some serious current there, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not really sure if this ran some other auxiliary things. That I just I wasn't really aware of, but for just this converter here, this is way overkill. So I'm sure there was other appliances and stuff that you could run when the trailer was plugged in. But uh, I'll get myself a flathead here, take those neutral wires off, and then we should be good to go take this box off. So I'll be back. There we are. And we should be able to now lift. Oh, I'm going to have to put the camera down here. This is awkward. As you can see, this is a beefy setup they got going on here. It's actually quite nice. Nice transformer there. Well, uh, there's some wires going down here to the bottom, just to it looks like a plug. So I'll quickly unplug those, and then we can set this down properly. Okay, so here we are. Here's the there's the big old transformer there. That is easily capable of 500 volt amps. That is a quite the unit. That's I'm sure you can get a KVA, KVA and a half out of that, no problem. So obviously here's your AC output here. You're gonna be your, it's gonna be root two, or your 12 volts out, or roughly 14 out, so I don't know what that is. 10-ish volts, something like that. Uh, going into two, two diodes here, that's, they got, that's actually interesting. They have, as you can see, two more holes for two more diodes. But in this configuration, they only have just two. So I'm confused as to, because this wouldn't be a full bridge rectifier then. And for a circuit this big, you wouldn't want high THD for ripple current. That wouldn't be very good. So these are feeding from this plug. So these are just your push button fuses, actually, for your 15 amp 120 volt circuits. So yeah, those would be the auxiliary circuits that you'd have on a trailer. It looks like there's some sort of circuit here. Let's uh, get an 8 pin dip there, a couple of pots looks like, and some resistors and some caps. I'll take a look at that. So I'm just going to hook this up uh, real quick to the mains and just see what it does, see if it works. So we'll just splice it in here. One done. I'm getting the neutral in there. Alrighty here, so I got it hooked up. Got the variac plugged in there. So now let's slowly turn up the voltage. Oh. See if there's any shorts. Do that again. Ah. Contactor. Very quiet transformer. Can't even hear it. Not even vibrating. See, that's a, those nice old transformers. They're really nice. They don't make any noise. So, full 120. Nothing. Don't feel a single thing. And if I turn this off. Yeah, so that's contacting something there. I'll put this down here. Let's measure those diodes. So 
so this is the input here this should be roughly aha uh -huh. so we got quite a bit of open circuit voltage there 29 volts open circuit okay and if I I'm gonna probe this with my scope so I'm gonna reference if you're never sure about isolation just take your one probe and then touch touch it to ground and then interesting so it's saying 70 volts to ground and 95 volts to ground I would assume this is an auto transformer And they got some other windings here. These, I'll check these. What are these guys? So there's quite a few terminals actually across. It's kind of hard to see here. I'll move this. I'm shocking myself. So across these two, your this guy here and this guy here is giving me about 30 volts. And there's some other ones down here, which I'm not sure what they do. There's your input. And uh, this to ground gives me, I think it was like 70 volts, this one was 85 to ground. So I'm hoping that's just parasitic capacitance, and it should drop when I put it under a slight load, but you don't know though. So what we're, I'm going to do, I can uh, well, I'll put it through a resistor and see, because the problem with these scopes is... This is direct connection to ground, so if you're probing, um, if you're using, I mean, you can touch it with this end, no problem, but your ground lead, if you touch that to anything that's referenced to ground with a potential, then it's going to short through the chassis of your oscilloscope, and it could do some bad stuff, so. I'll try, uh, actually, that's what I'll do. I'll measure this with a differential probe measurement, so let's use... It's not really a differential probe, but you just take two of these, measure just with these two guys here, and then they use a subtract function on your scope, and you should be able to get the uh, waveform there. So let's do that. I'll be back. Alright guys, I'm back. So essentially, I just drilled the rivets out, yanked this transformer out of here, and I've been mucking around with these windings here trying to figure out what's going on. It's uh, pretty basic really. So. Uh, well, actually, I got a diagram here. So, here, right here, is your obviously your 120 in primary coil, and you have two secondary coils. Okay, so uh, I got them labeled here. These, these would be your black leads right here. So, two blacks, and you got two oranges. So one black, one black, and then these two here are the orange, and they're not actually connected. Uh, as you can see, there's terminal there, terminal there. Uh, and the circuit they were, they were tied to a common point there. And essentially what this gives you, uh, from from either black to the orange, to, to their respective orange, so this black to this orange, and then this black to this orange, you're going to get roughly 16 volts uh, open circuit, just because it, when it's loaded down, you'll get voltage drop and etc uh, so uh, you have 16 volts from black to orange and each one of these windings are 180 degrees out of phase and so getting into here you have 16 volts going into one diode 16 volts going into the other diode and so that's why I was questioning because it's it'll be, normally this would have high ripple just going into one diode instead of a full bridge rectifier or four diodes uh, but as you can see, I've hooked them up to the scope here. So channel A, channel B. I uh, plug it in here, and as you can see, they are each exactly 180 degrees out of phase. And so what that does is you'll get uh, once the other diode is off, the other one will be on, and or sorry, one I shouldn't say on and off. I should say in conduction. So once the uh, say phase A diode is in conduction, the other one's going to be off, but then as soon as phase A diode drops, um, you're going to get, a, I mean, you obviously you'll, you'll get a crossing point, but you'll have essentially a, a rather smooth flat line, even without a capacitor in there. Uh, so you get 
pretty good THD percentage. I can calculate, I'll calculate it later for you guys, but uh, yeah, I'll hook this back up here. Hook this back up to those diodes, and we can actually look at the waveform of those diodes. These are, I had them written down there, they are IN3439R diodes. So they're 35 amp, 200 volt diodes with 400 amp peak rating, uh, or pulsed current rating. So they're pretty good diodes. And I'll still have to figure out the rest of the circuit here. I haven't touched much in that yet. Looks like we got a little bit of logic there. Uh, this is the 120, as we said. This isn't. And this isn't either, so I'll have to figure that out. But this this is a nice transformer here. You have, uh, I mean, those windings. These are nice windings right here. And because you have two of them, you can run them uh, essentially with a common here. Because this, you, you can touch this together. It's not going to matter. There's no potential there. Uh, but, oops, I just lost my clip here. But uh, tie these two together, tie these two together, because they have... Um, there's no physical connection between them and so by doing so you can get a nice high amperage transformer out of this like that'll handle I'm sure 50 amps easy and I was short circuit testing this uh, just this cheap little clamp meter here but I think I was like 30 volts in and, and just shorting uh, just a single phase together like this was giving me like 70 some amps so it's a decent transformer, makes zero noise. So yeah, that's a good little find there. Alrighty guys, so I just kind of quickly just, literally just twisted the cables together here, if I can focus. Can I focus? No, it can't. There we go. So as you can see, just jank connections, but it's enough to get a reading on the scope and to my surprise, both diodes are conducting at the same time, even though this right here is 180 degrees out of phase, which means that you should get, channel, well, depending, I, uh, be two, channel two, which is purple here, uh, should be conducting 180 degrees out, so it should be there, and then you should get less ripple, but apparently not. Uh, I don't know why it's set up like this, but obviously for current reasons only. Uh, so there's your voltage there, so that means the diode's uh, reverse bias, so it's not conducting, and here's conduction, reverse bias, conduction, reverse bias, conduction, as goes on forever. So I'm going to set this up in a way which I believe would be better than what they had, and uh, see if I can get that diode conduction sequence to be a little bit better here. So here we go. All right, so this is what we had before here. We got, it's scrolling. I can adjust the time here. Uh, give me a second. There we go. So this is the output uh, of the rectifier. And as you can see, it's only rectifying half the sine wave, so you're getting terrible ripple on the output. And so I've modified this circuit here. This was, I, th I originally thought I was probing it wrong, but that's actually the way they had it. Terrible design. Terrible design. So, I don't know why they wouldn't, when these two windings are out of phase, have them configured so you get, you know, a pulse here and a pulse here, 180 degrees out of phase, and then you get practically no ripple. This small amount in the middle there, small troughs. So, <clears throat> what I did is these orange wires uh, originally went down here in this circuit, which was also a return path up here. Um, I took those off, kept them common to each other again, and this time I put it here instead of to here. And then uh, now we have each of the phases going through the diodes, as you can see, those two diodes, which I've probed, and now the heatsink is live with both the diodes. Those diodes go through your load, which is just a dummy load, just a, it's like a 1 ohm 20 watt resistor, and then those go back to their respective phases, which are isolated from each other and won't interfere with each other. So, 
this isn't actually the old reading of the, the sorry the reading of the old circuit. Uh, I changed it up, so this is really just phase A uh, diode reading. So I'm just reading off of this diode right, oops, right here. So if I turn on channel two, here we are, and now I can zero both these. And as you can see, now you're getting twice the frequency, 120 hertz instead of 60, and you're getting much less off time for your um, DC component. So channel 3 is your output, and that is now... the output voltage and if I go give me a second here so if I take peak to peak uh, let's do mean for the DC component we can do RMS for the AC component and down there get frequency perfect so as you can see Peak to peak, we are getting about three ish volts. We're getting a mean value or DC component value of two volts. So that means on on average, the 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 average component of this waveform here is going to be two volts. Uh, your RMS, that's your AC component, 2.34 volts, and as you can see, frequency of 120 hertz. But what's important here? is the mean component. This is the component that you're you're going to be doing work with because you have a DC load and so if I drop a diode the waveform changes here. I'll, I'll look at the screen while I'm connecting this. Two diodes, one diode. Two diodes, one diode. So you can clearly see the difference and if I zoom in you notice the mean is practically halved. So your your DC voltage or your voltage that does say the work like heating a heater for you it's going to be roughly half the power you're getting in and so makes a huge difference so that's two and that's one diode and as you can see frequency is halved so this is a much better power delivery method if you ask me of course, I can increase the amplitude and such. Let's turn that down there. There we are. So we're at about four volts here. Four volts at well, this is a 1.2 ohm resistor, I believe. I just want to load the circuit down as much as I can. So yeah, 1.2 ohm. So I'll quickly do some math here. Okay, so we know that power, this is not your standard one, is equal to IV, or voltage times current, or you can use this formula. I squared R and from that we can find that if it's a 20 watt resistor equals I squared R therefore 20 over 1.2 whoops equals I squared so I is equal to square root of 20 over 1.2 which equals okay so I just put that in the calculator here and square root of 20 over 1.2 is equal to approximately 4.08 or 4.1 amps so over here we got uh, it's a 20 watt resistor and uh, as you know, as I said before, power is equal to voltage times current, so power over current gives you the voltage. So 20 over 4.08 amps is equal to 4.9 volts max input on the resistor. So 
I should be safe to hold this circuit up to a mean voltage. Remember, that's the that's the part that does the work. Mean voltage of we can give it some leeway here. There we go. Four point eight. Four point. We don't want to go over. That's close enough. Four point eight five. So that should be right on twenty watts. And it's not burning up. It's getting nice and warm, but it's not not burning up yet. So. So if you ever want to have a little test load like that, like a little a couple of resistors, make a bank out of them, then uh, that's an easy way to find your max value of input voltage. Okay, so now that we've seen uh, improving ripple here, just with diodes and configuring the transformer properly, unlike whoever designed this thing, uh, we can take some of these they are 250 volt, 1200 microfarad caps. I got two of them here. I'll wire them in parallel and we'll hook them across the output here just to see, so I can show you guys the uh, effect on ripple and how it changes with load according to the capacitance. So I'll be back once I just solder these up here. Alrighty, so I'm back here. Um, I got these set up. So I got the first one. The grounds there are connected together, negatives, positives are disconnected, so I only got the one running up. So this heat sink here happens to be the negative of this circuit. Uh, so the negative rail is currently disconnected here. And I have the positive lead, sorry I didn't color code these, just going to the positive right here. This is the positive common. So when I attach this, touch this, we should see less ripple. And so it's not attached right now. And now I shall attach the capacitor. It's not a huge effect, but it's there. And keep in mind, this is 250 volt rated capacitors. So they're not exactly ideal for this, but So it does take out some ripple, as you can see, and we are at the same focus, there we go, 4.9, I think it's, did I drift that? No, it's right on, so 4.98, uh, as I've, I've touched the dial a little bit to turn it up, but uh, watch what happens to the mean voltage when I connect the capacitor. Here we go. So now our mean voltage has drifted up to, well, 5.15 volts. I'm not sure what that shake was. 5.15 volts, 5.16. And so now we're getting even more power out of our circuit here. Sorry, I shouldn't say more power, but we're getting more potential voltage. It's less ripple. Our THD is getting better, which is a good thing. So now I'm going to hook up uh, two capacitors here, parallel. So positive, positive, negative, negative, and let's see the difference that has. Alrighty, so we got them both hooked up now. Again, positive rail, connected, negative rail, straight in my hand. This is open circuit on the capacitors. Again, four point roughly nine volts. And now, connecting capacitor bank. And here, I'll set this camera down here. As you can see, it makes that rather... Okay, so now we have the double capacitor bank here. So two capacitors in parallel. And I'll hook them up here. And that makes quite the difference on the ripple there. So now, I will change the time domain here. Oops. There we go. Now, we are going from... a mean voltage of roughly 4.9 volts 
all the way up to 5.65 as you can see right down here it's drifted a bit because the uh, resistors heated up but so that ha that's a half a volt difference and of course ideally for a whoops for a DC supply you're going to want um, to essentially add more capacitance until those ripples and those troughs disappear completely and you end up with practically no ripple there. And so the combination of, uh, actually I'll show you the difference here too. I'll show you one capacitor, or sorry, one diode. Okay. And with capacitors, the the difference is much greater as you can see. And you can see the the bleed off here. Normally, right about here, it just goes straight down with the according to the sine wave. But now your capacitor is smoothing out those troughs, and so you're getting down there that says mean voltage of 3.3 volts, and versus 2.63. So capacitors and diode configurations make all the difference. Alrighty guys, so I got my sheet out here. Uh, started a brand new page. Show you guys how to calculate just uh, really for any given waveform the total harmonic distortion. So let's get started. So um, actually I was here I'll show you in these previous pages. I was trying to use Fourier analysis slash Fourier series to find the TH, well, find the original waveform based off of the harmonics, but I couldn't do that. That wasn't working. I'll uh, see if I can figure that out, but I don't know if I can get that to happen. Uh, anyways, I'll show you a way you can actually do it. Uh, you have to have an oscilloscope, and it has to have obviously math functions. And you have to be able to have FFT right there, or Fast Fourier Transform. So, as long as you have that, you'll be fine. So, first things first, this is our input waveform. Right there, got a sine wave. Looks like it's about 6.1 6 volts RMS there. 60 hertz, of course, coming straight from mains. Uh, 12, well, it's a 12 volt transformer, but, um, yeah. We got it going into, of course, as you guys know, the two diodes there, and... Now I'm just going to change this. This is the common. It's common there, as you can see. We'll change it so it just references from this side of the diode to the other side, or add up to the cathode. Okay, so now you can see I get the halfway rectification there. Uh, there's your mean voltage, there's your RMS, and uh, hasn't drifted up too much. We should keep that at 4.9 as we calculated earlier. I'll try to move. Oh, there we go. It's kind of yeah. It's hard to get precise control with a variac like that when you're talking tens of a volt but anyways close enough to our uh, rated power for that little resistor there it's getting a little bit brown but it's 20 watt it'll handle it so to calculate the THD let's take uh, this waveform for example this is what it was originally outputting and configured as with both these diodes in parallel right there both those in parallel um, that's not how I would run it but so I'm so I'm, so I'm going to show you guys how uh, big of a difference it makes in terms of the distortion levels here. So let's get to calculating that. So we got this nice window here. It's working fine. Let's open up the math, and of course it's already on Fourier uh, or fast Fourier transform. And I already have this set up kind of, but uh, I can restart it here for you guys. I'll go to uh, under config. I'm hoping the glare isn't too bad. Let's just do auto set because that never works. As you can see, it doesn't work. I mean, it might work for the table still, but no. Uh. Okay, so uh, you're going to get something that looks kind of like this, pretty terrible. So you want to change, uh, not on, most people, I mean, you can change your time domain, right? And stretch things out. But if you look at these numbers, things get less and less accurate as you increase or as you decrease your um, your time domain so as I'm getting closer in things get less accurate so you want to have a fairly big window that you're looking at the waveform here like 
50 per division, that sounds good. Actually, that's too much. I'll say 10 per division is okay. That's, that's fine. It's good enough. So now, uh, at least in terms of if you have a Siglent, uh, which I do, you want to go to your horizontal configuration. And as you can see, center, it's centering it at some weird number. Uh, let's change that. Let's set it to zero. Okay. Enter that guy in. There we go. Now we're centered at zero here. Now frequency per division, 500 kilohertz. So that's way too high for our applications. There we go, 10. So yeah, as you can see, you can see those nice... And you only really need a couple here. Five is good. We're only going to five, so... That worked pretty nicely there. You can go out more, and you can change your threshold voltages, so you can see all the lower ones there. All those lower ripples will get... Uh, or I should say harmonics will get uh, just ignored by the oscilloscope, but you can change all that. We don't really care about those. Those don't make up a big component of... Uh, your total distortion because as you know the frequency will double and the, ampl the uh, amplitude will have every time so it really doesn't make a big difference after you get down to say six or so so we got this now and uh, I already have it enabled but you probably don't you want to enable your table so in this case it'll be under um, tools and right here, show table on. Type, we want to do peaks, because obviously your peaks are where your frequencies are going to be. You can do other things, but markers, etc. Show frequency, let's show the frequency. And we want to sort by the amplitude, of course. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So now we have that. You can see our table in the top left corner there. So now. I'm going to show you guys the formula for calculating it. It's really not that hard, actually. So, t to calculate THD, um, really, all it is, is the square root of the sum of your, sorry, this is not a very good cameraman, of your, uh, your harmonic voltages, over your nth or your fundamental uh, voltage and these are RMS so you want to take the sum of uh, say 5.75 and 2.2 square them and then square root them and then divide it by your fundamental there so it's really not that hard so let's take as you can see peak 2 there and has an amplitude of 5.73 will be exact 5.7 3 square it plus the addition of 2.2 .2. okay and uh, so I figured we'll just include 4 and 5 why not so uh, 361 and 733 okay so plus Oops, 0 0.733, square those, and this is all going to be over, as I said, the fundamental, which is going to be 6.85 volts, not squared, like that. So I'll be back once I calculate this here. Okay, so now, let's put that in my calculator here, and the, to the sum of this equals 6.191913 over 6.85. So now I punch that in my calculator and we get 0 0.903. This is scientific, so that's why it's 903. But anyways, um, okay, so we have that as a decimal. Now we multiply this by 100 to get your percentage. And, uh, well, basic math, <laughs> that is a absolutely terrible 90% roughly, 90% harmonic distortion. <laughs> God awful is what that is. So, that's for just a 
Uh, half wave rectified. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat the same thing for the full wave rectified. Alright, here, so we got our two different uh, diodes there, and then there's the output waveform, so I'll disable these channels. There we are, output waveform there. Let's center that, just using auto. Might work. Eh, it worked pretty good. We'll give it that. Now, let's turn on math, FFT. And, as you can see, we're getting quite a bit less in terms of harmonics. Oops. Um, I can do tools. See, I just tried doing what I told you not to do. Horizontal. Okay, let's increase this. 100 hertz per division. And as you can see, we're only getting really two or three. So that's good. That means it's worthwhile. So I'll get to calculating this now. We only got one, well, obviously I have one fundamental and only two harmonics, so I'll be back once I got those written down here. Yeah, I managed to bring up a couple more. I was using the excursion function down there, as you can see, so I can, it was at 200, and as you can see, that leaves us with the three, but uh, put that to zero, and we get a couple more barely distinguishable peaks. If you focus, there we go. So, uh, yeah. Add those in, I guess. They won't make a big difference, because they're already decimals, and I'm squaring a decimal, and yeah, but we'll add them in. Okay, so here's the math here. We got fundamental, 6.7 volts, RMS, then we got our first harmonic, second and third, and I was going to do a fourth, but I mean, it was 0 0.02 squared, so that's nothing. This ends up being, uh, once you square root it, here, let's see, I'll show you guys here. I had it as A. So that the sum of that is 5.85, and then square rooting that. So, whoops, square root of A. You get 2.41, yada yada yada, divided by our fundamental of 6.7, and times 100, 36.11 percent. So that's a 54 percent improvement over its original configuration, which is much better, but it's still pretty bad. So now let's add some capacitors in there and uh, see if we can that, that can bring it down even closer. So I've just added on these two. Uh, what's the value here? So I've added 2400 uh, microfarads of capacitance to this, which isn't a whole bunch considering it's a low voltage, high amperage circuit, but as you can see on here, things are changing again. And this is set to average. Uh, so, as you can see, our fundamentals actually going up because, uh, well, of course it makes sense because we have uh, some capacitance in there. So our DC component, or the one with zero hertz, is going to be obviously increasing. So it looks like it's settled out around seven, yeah, 7.6 there. And our first harmonic is now down to 1.7. Whoa, holy, sorry about that. Uh, let's get this to focus here. Come on, focus. Here we go, down to 1.7 volts. And your second one is 0.3, so this will be a good one to do. So I'll write it down again and I'll show you the result. Okay, so I got, uh, I put in quite a few values there and got four harmonics. Fundamental actually settled out to around 7.65 volts. So doing the math here, we end up with 22.5% total harmonic distortion, which, as you can see going up the list, 90 compared to 22%. Okay, this is god-awful. This is still actually pretty bad, but it is much, much better of a waveform than it was in the first place. I mean, you would be, first of all, you'd be missing, um, actually, I can make it miss if I do that. Oops, if I do that, there. So now it's got those troughs again. And then we can also take out a diode, like that. That is what we were de dealing with before. That is not a DC voltage. What we have made 
is a DC voltage, and it's really relatively easy. These are, I mean, I wouldn't really use 250 volt rated capacitors, but just a point for this demo. And ideally, you would want a really, really large capacitance to get that to relatively low ripple. And you can, uh, depending on your load, it'll vary with load, right? Because if you, if I took this, just made it open circuit, then a the voltage is going to, is going to be higher, and b uh, your capacitors aren't going to have to discharge as much, so your, your slope or your your discharge isn't going to be as much, which means you have less ripple. But uh, that's all part of designing a DC power supply. Anyways, that's just the basics. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you want, I can do a little bit more teardowns here. I can. I'm thinking about making a video on uh, turning this guy here into a nice bench power supply. So. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.